Many of us startup and high growth B2B marketers don't have a lot of experience with traditional analyst relations. Influencing the analysts, getting into a wave or magic quadrant, paying for their services, it's like some kind of dark art of marketing. It's one of those relics of old school marketing that probably should just go away. On today's episode of Demand Gen U, Alex Verdon and I, our product marketing maven, are gonna talk through our most recent experience with a Forrester wave, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Demand Gen U is officially in session, let's do it. All right, everybody, uh, back with another episode of Demand Gen U. I'm super excited. We've got Alex Verdon, our amazing senior product marketing manager here with us today. Uh, Alex joined us, has it been seven months ago now? I think. February. Yeah, seven. I was right. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah seven months ago. Uh, it's just been amazing at helping us really uh, up-level our product marketing capabilities um, and so much more. So, Alex, why don't you say hi and introduce yourself? Yeah, thrilled to be here. Um, my background is demand gen and then switched over to product marketing uh, three or four years ago at this point. Uh, Mark came into my DMs on LinkedIn and joined Metadata in February and never looked back. So really, really glad to be on the team and here today to talk all yeah. things Foster. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been awesome. It's been awesome working with you. I um, And you knew this in the beginning, like I didn't know, I don't know product marketing very well. And so... Uh, Honestly, like really not. And in my ops roles, I was probably the further one of the furthest removed, you know, from product marketing. Actually, I was in a place too that product marketing was in the product team, which was a kind of interesting and mm-hmm. weird. But um, but no, I've learned so much from you. It's been awesome just kind of seeing you uh what good product marketing can actually really do. So it's been awesome just to like learn from you and see what you've been able to do. And the whole team is just like really appreciative of everything. And so yeah, it's been got awesome having you. So um, so Alex is on today because uh, she and I worked together on a Forrester wave recently, and uh, she really kind of carried the entire thing through. And she has a lot of the kind of experience of what we went through. And so <clears throat> we thought uh, analyst relations, like I said in the opener, is just like one of those areas that uh, I know I don't know enough about or a lot about. I What I do know about it, I, I'm kind of jaded on it. I feel like it's a little bit of a, I don't know, uh, st- I don't know, not good. <laughs> what word do I use? It's not great. Um, um, yeah, so we thought, you know, other marketers out there too, probably kind of trying to figure out what to do with analysts in uh, in this day and age. Um, and, even, you know, I've had a couple of conversations recently with other marketing leaders and they they're even starting to like, what do I do here? What do I do there? And can I do this? And can I do that? And so kind of an interesting topic. Um, before this one, Alex, did you... I can't remember. Did you did you participate? You participated in several before, right? No. I, well, the organizations I worked at did, but yeah. normally um, it was held in the corporate comms department, so we would mm. only weigh in really on the product information and positioning. So yeah. this is my first time going all the way through. Nice, nice. <laughs> on a brief pace, yeah. So you were aware of it though, because you kind of kind of knew oh, yeah. yeah the process and yeah. Um, so I thought you know um, actually what was I going to start with? Oh yeah, frame up what we're talking about. Yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I got halfway there. I think I'm halfway there. Um, so today, you know, what we want to talk about is not just the, not just that wave process, but just kind of like analyst relations in general. And we're talking about it, not from the perspective of experts, right? Cause like, we're kind of learning about it right now too, but more from the level of like people that are in the middle of it, doing it right now and trying to figure it out. And also I think trying to do it a different way. Like we don't want to participate in the standard way. And so we're like, we're trying different things to see if if and how we can kind of penetrate in new ways. So, um, so we'll talk a little bit about just kind of the general, um, analyst relations kind of stuff too. And then we'll get into, uh, our experience at the wave. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's jump in. Let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) Cool. Um, so I'm going to soapbox for a minute on, um, on this whole analyst relations thing. And this is, all of this is from my experience. And so uh, the experience I've had, like I said, is very little, but like my first experience with analyst relations was when I was at Tableau and I was, you know, marketing ops, so it wasn't my job, but we did this annual Tableau conference and there was, you know, like 12 to 14,000 in-person participants, you know, like people at this conference. Um, And as a, 
side conference, we did this whole like analyst relations part of the conference and they had their whole like separate VIP area. And, and I just wow. remember talking with like the, and they brought me in cause they wanted me to kind of like schmooze some of the, uh, and you know, analysts that were there. And so I just, it was so interesting, like how much time and effort went into like knowing about these analysts. And I had like a whole bio, you know, and like what they like and what they care about. And here's what they did last year. And here's what they talked about and what they wrote. And it was like my job to do something specific with them. And so that was like my first experience. I was like, man, we're really pandering to these, you know, these analysts quite a bit. Yet Tableau was like number one, you know, and I mean, it was already very big and just very well known. And so it's like, that was my first where I was already like, hmm, you know, I was kind of like, ah, right. this doesn't feel, this feels a little 1980s kind of, you know, get people in a room, treat them, I don't know. It just felt kind of, kind of odd. So that was my first experience with it. Um, and then coming here to metadata, which, you know, we're like trying to figure it out. Um, but by then I'd already realized like, I'll try and summarize the whole analyst game here in like a minute. So analysts work for firms and those firms make money by selling analyst services. And the analyst services are basically these analysts that these firms hire that are supposed to have pretty good experience in the area that they're covering. And whatever category your product is in, you have like one to many analysts that are covering your category. And the benefit, air quotes, <laughs> that you get um, is that they talk to everybody else in the category and they should have like a nice firmed up or nice formed opinion about the, the category and what others are doing. And they can give you advice and, you know, you can present things to them. Um, these subscriptions are expensive, you know? So like, uh, I think my first started doing it. They were like $60,000 a year. Now I don't think you can get into them for under $100,000. I don't think, maybe I'm wrong, but they're really expensive. Um, and, but the rub is these same analysts are the ones that are creating these wave and quadrant reports. And so obviously if you pay for their time and you have time to get in front of them to present your stuff and get their advice, and then maybe show them that you took their advice and like, you know, mm -hmm. then they will be more favorable to you in that report. And it kind of makes sense even even if there isn't this money exchange and like the, that, you know, that kind of stuff going on, it's, it's, you know, it's like, okay, that makes sense that that's how it works. But what it does not do is it shortchange the smaller vendors where like can't afford to do that. And then they're left with like, oh, can you please meet me, meet with me for 30 minutes, sir? You know, like, <laughs> can I please take, you know, please, you know, and then they're on the call and their video is off, you know, and you don't even know if they're listening to you. And, they can't really give you advice because you're not paying for their services, but they're doing it so that they know about the area. So that's the general, that's the general analyst relations game. Did I miss something? No, I think you hit it spot on. It's a long game kind of strategy that if in some regard it's pay to play or, you know, schmooze to play in a lot of ways. So I think we yeah. learned that a little bit this time around too. Yeah. And I don't, you know, and I wouldn't, I don't know how to, you know, I don't know how to change it, you know? So I, I don't know how to change that game, but, um, and then you think about like, well, why do you, why do you do this? You know, you do this because you want to get a favorable position in one of these reports, you know? Um, and it's not that you need it, you know, but like, it's always nice. Yeah. Um, street cred for sure. Yeah. In some ways. And especially, I think one of the things that we learned is like enterprise companies, you know, that's where really it will probably have the biggest impact um, because enterprise companies, they like to, they like to, they like to get a short list from somebody, you know, and they, they want to, they want to choose from one of the top X number of companies and like have somebody else do that first research. And then they take that and then they like, okay, well, let me take these 10 companies and go see which one might be best fit for me. Um, so that's how it's supposed to work, you know, but um, but there's just too much, you know, and you talk to some of these big companies and they're paying so much money to these analyst firms and there's just too much money exchanging hands. You know what I mean? When it's commercial, when it's wrapped up in the commercial stuff and Forrester and Gardner have to make money and they have to be profitable and they have to pay their people, 
Um, I don't know how it can be like really un like truly unbiased. Yeah. Like super objective. It's it's easy for the money part too to get just in your head. Like, am I paying enough? It's like keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. Yeah. Who's, yep. pay, who's paying the most? Who's gonna get the favorable placement? Yeah. 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 And then and then it's kind of like up to the analyst to determine like, well, what do I tell these, you know, what do I tell them and what do I tell them? And so, um, but in my experience, like, unfortunately, the analysts that I've met with, they're not, they're actually not very well versed in, they're very well versed in like the technologies of five to eight to 10 years ago, yeah. but they just, and you know, they're one analyst. So I'm, do I fault them? I mean, I fault the whole, I fault the whole system, the system. you know, but Mm -hmm. You know, the analyst is trying, but there's all these tools in their space and they have to focus somewhere, I guess. Right. Um, but the buyer at the end of the day may not be getting the full, they're not, they're not getting the full picture of what they could. Mm -hmm. And that's where these sites like G2, you know, and other sites kind of come in and help to, uh, close that gap a little bit, but, yeah. um, but yeah, there's still these ones, these, these big reports that the, I think enterprise companies like, so. So yeah, that's the general, I think, like analyst relations rub um, and uh, and why we don't really like it, you know? And so we tried a couple of things. I've tried meeting with them and challenging them. I've tried recording a video and sending it to them to see if then like literally goose egg, watch it, like views of that video, zero. Like literally right. I, negative views of the video. <laughs> so so um, so we're still trying, we're still learning, but you know, the, the like current approach, the current, like modern, I hate the word modern, but like the modern strategy of like the Dave Gearhart's and, you know, the likes of those folks is like, don't do it at all. You know, mm -hmm. don't do analyst relations. Like ultimately analyst relations was a means to an end, you know, to get in front of other people. So what if you just actually try to get in front of those people yourself right. in a way that, you know, is convincing and influential. Um, okay. and that's, I think the direction that we've taken is let's build our audience, you know, of people that like what we're saying and will help us promote and amplify what we're saying. Right. And then maybe through that, you know, we'll kind of, my goal from the very beginning was to not ever talk, like to not talk to the analysts and to like, get so big, like grow our company so large that they have, like they were coming to us saying, will you please brief, like, will you please brief me? Like my customers like really want to, I think that's going to be my strategy now is like, just ignore them completely until we get big enough that they're actually going to come to us and say, will you please give me a brief? And then, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see a brief in a fruit basket. That's, that's what we'll <laughs> gift them. Yeah. They probably have addresses that are completely like, I wonder if anyone's figured that out. Yeah. Like, Gifting to the analysts probably doesn't work. Um, no, no, they need to give us the fruit basket. Oh, they need to give. Yes, they yeah, absolutely do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. So I think that's good on the um, on the framing. So now let's get into the the meat of our process, and this is where you can really help weigh in um, a lot more as well, too. So, all right. So let's talk about how. Um, well, let's actually first talk about like our kind of challenge as we get into, you know even when we're talking to analysts and we're talking about things, you know, all these things are in categories, right? So we're always talking about categories. So analysts are responsible for categories of software and G2, you got categories. So let's talk a little bit, a, a little bit about our category challenge. Um, you want to kick us off on that? Cause I know you know it really well. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, when I think about the uh, wave process, I feel like we felt really good about kind of how we were going to be positioned or the B2B to be advertising solutions category. But when we got the results back, it kind of was a miss in some of the areas of our platform. And it just goes back to the category, um, not challenge, but really opportunity that metadata has to be a broader solution for B2B marketers. Whereas, you know, a lot of these waves or quadrants are looking at one slice of the issue. So, you know, for this one in particular, weighed more on display. Well, you know, we feel, and I think a lot of B2B marketers that we talk to feel, it's a tip of the spear solution. So, you know, we don't hang our hat on that. We're building something broader, something that's more both lead gen, brand awareness, something that can take away the manual and mundane tasks of the, the B2B marketers that we talk to every day. So, 
Yeah. <clears throat> and this was, this was our challenge two years ago when we did our first Forester wave is that we were included in the ABM platforms wave. And I remember when we got invited to that, I was like, thank you, but we're not an ABM platform. You know, mm -hmm. I know we're in that category on G2 and like we kind of sell against those platforms, but we're not. Um, should we participate? And like, oh yeah, you know, you know, and I didn't know any better. And we participated and we just got like dead last, you know, just like dead last. And then this latest one, like you mentioned, the B2B advertising solutions, that's a brand new one. And that's a new category for them. So we also didn't really quite know how, um, how they were going to define it. I mean, and we'll get into that in a minute, but this is the challenge of us not really having a category. We didn't build an ABM platform. We didn't build a CDP. We didn't build a B2B advertising solution. Um, we built something that marketers needed, you know, and so like there was no category for that. So that's one of the challenges that we have that maybe not every, every other company would have. If you're already in a category, it's cleaner because then they know which, which wave or which magic quadrant to put you in. If you're like kind of in between categories, then I think you can have experiences like us where they're like, we want to invite you in because we see you have momentum. But then like based on the criteria for this one, you don't actually do that well. Um, right. So yeah, so I think that's one of the challenges of, and why category is important. Going back to the point you made about, um, you know, I actually, I don't I recall exactly what you said, but one of the points is if we keep going down these, oh, being big enough that they come to us. So oh, yeah. keep going down these paths of applying to waves or applying to, you know, categories that somebody else is prescribing, then we are only slicing and dicing ourselves versus, hey, we're building something bigger and we'll just hands off for a little bit until we can figure it out and and make yeah. more that way no it's a good point because you're right because like if we're building different products in different areas but then we're just getting judged you know on one of them we yeah we may not be the leader in that one right how they defined it you know because we didn't build that you know but yeah so it's an interesting thing um to think about and like this latest one well i think we'll probably talk about it a little bit the the end results were were weird i think a little bit you know just in terms of like some of the other companies that we were in there with right. but um but yeah i'm sure we'll touch on that. <laughs> yeah yeah um all right so <clears throat> let's talk about how you how you get into one you know one of these waves or magic quadrants um so i know on this one i'll talk about this a little bit because i might know a little bit more on this one um the earlier part, because I think the earlier part happened before you even started. Yeah, so I'm here for that. <laughs> yeah. So they, so Forrester reached out to us and said, Hey, we're doing this new, I think they call it a now tech or new tech report, new tech or now tech. I always, yeah. anyway, it's like a report of like, Hey, we're starting this new category. We're going to give a report on the, on the vendors that are currently in it. It's not a wave. So they don't rank anybody. It's just like, Hey, here's this new category we see forming up. Here are the players that are currently in it. And here's like a, a write-up, you know, and like what they're good at and stuff. Um, and since we weren't going to be ranked, we were like, oh, sure, let's participate. And, but it's a precursor, a predecessor to being in the waves. You have to be in this now tech report. Well, we were just scraped by. I think we actually, maybe we, we weren't going to be in the now tech or we did get in that, but we didn't have at the, like, it was weird. It was like, you had to have $10 million of revenue. And like our last year report didn't have that, but we were well over 10 million. And so I actually had to go back and say, they were, they came to me and said, Hey, sorry, we're not going to include you. I was like, wait, why? And they're like, well, because you don't have 10 million in revenue. I was like, oh no, we do. We do. So here's the new sheet, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so that was like the first part, but I think with Forcer, that might be how you first start out. Or if it's an existing wave, I think you're building into that category. I don't know how you get I honestly don't know how you get um, found out. You know what I mean? And included. I actually don't know. Um, do you know? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Good I don't question. either. I think it's, I think it's their customers mentioning the company. So I think when they hear the company enough times, then they start to get it in their head. And if their customers are mentioning it, I think that's that's one of the ways. But there's probably several ways. Um, and then. So once we got through all that, then to get invited, it's just like an email, you know, they just send you an email and they're like, here's the criteria. But the problem I had was like, the timeline is so short, you know, they basically give you this, um, this big survey to respond to. Um, and I want to say it was like two weeks or something. Was, do you remember? I think it's crazy short. And the questions are like, not just one broad question, it's question that has four different components to it. So yeah, we were... 
um, all hands on deck for that that spreadsheet. It's quite lengthy too. Yeah, and talk a little bit more like each there's like character limits too, right? With each yeah. response. Yeah, it's um, it's like a you know a professional sport to fill these things out. Um, <laughs> and it's like four questions for each question. There's multiple sections, and then there's character limits. So. You know, you have four questions that you want to answer around a particular feature or service to customers. And it's like, well, wait, I only have a thousand characters. So let me try to figure out one word that can encapsulate a phrase and, you know, get everybody's opinion and then get it through approvals. So, you know, you have to just be on it up until the deadline. And I think we even got a bit of an extension because we were still working That's through right. how to say things that... A, a clear and con concise way. That's a good point. And that's maybe tip number one. <laughs> their deadline is not their deadline. So because <laughs> because they know there's going to be stragglers. So absolutely ask for a time extension for sure. And I think, do you remember how long we got? It wasn't a week, I don't think, but it was several no, days maybe. It was like we had to three hours <laughs> and we got to like a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. It was not okay. a rest extension. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely ask for that because because uh, they they build that into the timeline for sure. Yeah. So yeah, so that's a good one. Um, all right. So then once you so you get this thing and you see the criteria and no matter what, it's just like a it's a it's a sentence or two in a box, right? <clears throat> and let's talk a little bit about how like clear or unclear these things are. So what was your when you read through it? <clears throat> What was your initial, like, and just as a reminder, this was a B2B advertising solutions wave. Right. And so, again, we play in that space, but that's not what we built. And so when you read it, when I sent it to you, what were your, do you remember kind of what were your initial thoughts? I remember thinking some, some questions were pretty straightforward and I felt like we could come up with good answers. Other questions, it felt like the multi-question questions had a question behind them so it was more of like a strategic question versus a you know nuts and bolts kind of thing and so working through that when we had just at the time um released display you know the the um i think that came out in march maybe and it was all at the same about the same time um we were trying to just figure out answers so there were some questions on our part but then there was some like is this a strategy question or do they really need just like a list of every kind of, you know, firmographic or something that we have in the platform? Um, so it was a little all over the place for me, especially too, when I joined in February, just kind of drinking from the fire hose, understanding the platform, right, um, right. but working across teams, still we'd come down. I remember like Silvio and I being like, well, what's the question behind this question and how do we answer this right? Um, yeah. So clarity... <laughs> Uh, it's challenging. You know, the sentences, the questions are complexly written. So <laughs> right, right. I don't think it's as straightforward as it could be. <laughs> no. And I remember, I remember reading it and I was like, yes. I remember thinking, I was like, yes, this is exactly what we do. You know, I, I remember some of the questions I was like, okay, you know, we don't do this. We don't do that. But man, out of all of the waves I've been given, you know, like, are invited to. I was like, this is clear, by far the clearest one that's like as close as, uh, it's as close to our solution as any of them have been, you know? And so I was feeling bullish, you know? Um, and this is another thing that you should know is that you can say no mm -hmm. and you don't have to participate. And what the vendor will do, <clears throat> they'll, they'll kind of, they'll try and scare you a little bit into it. They'll, they'll be like, well, you know, we can still include you. We'll just have to go off of what's on your website, you know, but they oftentimes they don't, they actually won't do it because they, it's that it, then it, it, they know it too. It's not an apples to apples comparison. So they'll say that, but I don't think that they, they will not include you in it. So the second round of the ABM platform wave, they came to us and they're like, Hey, yeah, Hey, last place. Yeah. You want to try and, you know, what do you think? You do a little better this time. We were like, nope, we're not playing with you because we're not an ABM platform. So just no. And they're like, okay, well, we'll probably still include you. Nope, we got a nice little honor. We got a nice little mention in there <laughs> and they didn't include us, you know? And so, um, but this one, I was like, oh yes, but I'd been burned, you know, we'd been burned before. So I was very, I remember sending it out, you know, that big email I wrote, I was like, I think we should, you know, do it. 
sent it to Olivier, Gill, all of us. Um, and I think everyone kind of agreed, you know, um, what were your, th I mean, I know you didn't know our platform that well, but didn't it kind of feel like when we were talking through it, didn't it feel oh, like, just, man, this sorry. is good. I feel like by the time the answers were written and we looked through it, it felt really good. Like, so that's where my, by the end of it, we submitted it. It was like, yeah, this feels like we are strong contenders. I mean, you don't know. The other thing is you don't know who you're going to be against, right? So we yep. feel good from our perspective, but it's like kind of a mystery as to who's going to be included in this report. Um, but overall, yeah, I think everybody felt really confident about this one. And I compared the answers from the ABM uh, wave submission to this, and it was just a much more mature responses and our, yeah. the, it was clear the platform had grown and our business had grown. So yeah, it felt good. It had about been about it. two years. Yeah. I think it'd been two years mm -hmm. since we did that last one. So, um, some decent time had passed. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so we, and we kind of touched on this earlier. We, we really went heads down. Um, we had three or four people, I think working on the different questions, some of our product folks, people that knew, know it really well. Um, here's the funny part. So, it, in order to be included in the wave, the features have to be built into the platform and, and demoable. And so like what we did, we, ours wasn't yet. So we had, we actually were running display for our customers in a back part of our platform for the longest time. And literally right as the wave came out, we were releasing the in platform version of it. So it was like, oh yeah, I remember it was in beta and in the product, it said beta. And I was like, no, no take the beta off the product because they won't, they won't, <laughs> you, they won't include it if it's in beta. And so we kind of had to like smoke a mirror a little bit, but you know, it's all part of the game, right? Cause the, it was honest. Like we had, the product was available to all customers and that was the, that was the number one thing, but we just had labeled it beta still. Cause we just wanted to give customers like, but I know that if they saw that, that they wouldn't. And so at one point we were just going to use a demo environment, you know, completely like hacked together demo environment. And I even asked, so I was like, hey, you know, so some of our features are easy, more easy to demo in a demo environment. Uh, will that be okay? And like, oh yeah, no problem, you know? And so, but we actually ended up using the full platform anyway. So we didn't, we didn't actually, we did not lie at all. Um, but we had to do some like, some like, look over there, you know, just. <laughs> Watch my finger. Don't see what's happening. With me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was kind of funny um, that we were just like, hey. I remember going to Emily, our head of engineering, like, hey, can you quickly change this in the product before they go into it? She's like, oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> like by Tuesday, it was out. But so, yeah, so um, just make sure you know. Um, and this, you know, so this was truly our V1 of this display product. But we honestly didn't think, and this was part of where we got bait and switched. The way the questions were written, there were several that were very, that were obviously display focused. But so many of the other questions felt like they were agnostic of a channel and even right. asking about multi-channel. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. So that's partly, that was a big reason why we felt good about it. Cause we're like, okay, several of these sections are very much focused on display. So we knew we needed to have the display piece in to really score well, but so mm -hmm. many others like around targeting and like these things, we were just like, oh yeah, yeah like we do this so well. So right. talk a little bit about like when we got the responses back and like what you felt, <laughs> what oh, you saw God. in there and like how you felt. <laughs> yeah i mean we felt really good sending them off we get them back there's a bunch of i think it's out of five right one to five yeah yeah yeah. Um, yep. and so there were a lot of ones a lot of twos and i think where i was most shocked is we felt really confident about the reporting aspects of the platform the targeting and then our future vision for building out the marketing operating system for b2b marketers so to see ones and then to see the criteria and to have it be so focused on display felt like blindsided almost. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. <clears throat> display, I mean, talking to B2B marketers, you know, I think in our blog response about this wave, we talk to B2B marketers like all the time, 24 um, seven. And display does not come up as like, a, I must have the best solution for this. So it felt just off. The vibes were... Yeah not good so <laughs> <laughs> no no and that's where we were puzzled too and like alex mentioned earlier on you don't know who else is in the wave until the very very end and you kind of have so because of that new tech report or that now tech report you have some uh, an idea but in that one they actually didn't split out b2b versus b2c so it was like just a big bunch of companies and so you're like okay 
So I guess it's going to be a subset of these that are B2B, but well, there were so definitely more revenue. So it was like, oh, oh that's right too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Amazon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And so, um, so I remember too, when we got that. And so when they send you back the, and this is another thing I forgot to mention is they don't just ask you questions about the product. They then also ask you questions about your strategy and like your vision and that kind of thing. And your and the money and ARR and that kind of stuff. But when we got it back, I remember the same thing. I, they give it, they give you back the scoring and the rubric they used. So you can see like, what does a five look like? What does a three, what does a one look like? And I remember thinking like, I was, I was upset. I was definitely upset. I remember, I think I was telling you, like, I can't even, I was I like, I can't even talk about it. It was like for a minute, maybe, I don't know. And then I was like, okay, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. <laughs> I believe the email forward had some expletives in it and all caps with exclamation points. I think everybody was just generally bummed because I, the other thing we didn't mention is you submit the criteria, right? And then you have mm. a two hour demo with them. That's and we right. felt yes. really great coming off the demo. There weren't a lot of questions. We didn't really even lean in to the display stuff. We talked about, again, like I mentioned earlier, the entire whole of the metadata platform versus, you know, narrowing in on display. And that was well received. So we, we felt really good on both halves. And so then to get, yep. you know, a one for our strategy was like... <laughs> What is this? Like, yeah, yeah. we missed something where the signals. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, I remember that too. We were on that. And that's the other, yeah, we totally forgot about that. You do this two hour demo and you like really get really prepped for it. You also have to give them three references, like customers that they go yeah. and talk to as well. So you got to prep them. And because we had just released display, we had to quickly get these customers on <laughs> <to> display. <laughs> I remember that too. It was like quickly, let's get them on display and get them like onboarded. That was pretty funny. But, um, but yeah, yeah, that demo. And I remember sitting through it and, and the, the analysts, I won't name their name. The analyst was on camera, you know, and right. they were asking like a really good questions and leaning in and it felt like, oh, they get it. They get us. They understand. And this was not my first briefing with this analyst. And I'd had several really good interactions with them. Um, I still really like them. Like, don't get me wrong. But um, and I, I honestly think they are one of the better, honestly, one of the better analysts I've I've worked with. But um, so then you get a rebuttal period and this is, all... <laughs> You're... Well, let's talk about my first, let's talk about my first rebuttal. <laughs> we had to uh, tone it down a bit. And if, if I were to summarize the first pass was a little emotional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. It was... Time. Yeah. I think I had to do that one. You know what I mean? To like get it out of my system. Starting, right? Yeah, I had yeah. to get it out. But I was like, I was basically saying like, you have no fucking idea what you're, you, you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, like you are completely off, you know, bait and switch. And so then I even sent it to you and Kate. I was like, how's this? And I thought I was like, I was like I'm ready to pull the trigger. How's this? And I was like, you're like, hmm. Maybe no. not, you know, like we'll probably actually, they might actually reduce our scores further if they get this one. <laughs> but the, the thing is you actually get a chance to, they're very limited. I think you can like write three things, you know, three things that you think they got wrong. And then you actually have a chance to go and meet with them again. And so I just took the opportunity to go meet with them. I didn't even try and really rebut it. I was just like, I used that time to just kind of tell them I was disappointed a little bit. And like um, the way I just told them, like the way it was written, it just, it was not, anywhere near as clear as like now with the scoring that how focused on display that you were. Um, and it would have been nice to know through the conversations, you know, that it, this was really all display because it didn't read that way. And so yeah. that's mostly what I used the time. And he kind of appreciated it. I said, I got on the phone. I was like, listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do what everyone thinks I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to lose my shit. I, I told him, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to lose my mind, but, you know, I just want to share some of my thoughts with you, you know, um, not, and they were, yeah. he was cool about it. Yeah, he was cool about it. But the other yeah, thing that we was try to, to rewrite some of the answers, no change. So, yeah, you know, no if yeah. you get a score yeah. back you don't like, I think it's highly unlikely that they're in the position yeah. to change scores. Totally. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was so then we got that. We tried to do the rebuttal. Um, that didn't work. So then. Uh, you still, I think that was before, yeah, that was before we knew where we even placed. Mm -hmm. So then like a week or two before it comes out, they show you your placement <laughs> with nobody else in there. So like, they kind of like, they're just slow rolling you. And they're just like, right. yeah, 
into your disappointment. So you're you're like knife a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, oh man, I'm a contender. Shoot, okay. <laughs> and you don't even know who the other ones are. So now right. you're sitting waiting for another couple of weeks. And then we got the whole thing back, and we were just like, what is this? I don't even have it up, but I remember. Some of the standard players, like the ABM vendors, were in there and they were they sat about the same where we were, except Terminus somehow were sitting up in the shiny top right, you know. And I think it's because they they've really focused on their display, you know, their display solution. And I, you know, Rich, who used to work there, I talked to him, I was like, Rich, is it really that good? He's like, Yeah, it's actually pretty good. You know, their display solution yeah. solution's pretty good. Trade desk was up there. Well, that makes sense. They're a display platform, you know. <laughs> but then <laughs> LinkedIn. LinkedIn was at the top. So we're, it's, here we are, little metadata, you know, tiny little metadata. And we're in the same wave as goddamn LinkedIn, you know? Right. So I'm like, what? The, and it's like our ads drive through LinkedIn. So like, right. what is this, you know? Um, so that was like one of the, and then Adobe. Right. I'm like, yeah. what does Adobe even do? Like, what do they even have when it comes to a B2B advertising solution? I don't even know what I would buy from them for this, you know? Right. So, yeah. uh I was, that's when we got it back. And I was just like, I this mean, makes no sense. If the scoring, the initial scoring was shocking, but then to see the wave placements was like even more shocking. It's like, how do you even process this? Should I feel good mm -hmm. that a big player like LinkedIn were in the same stratosphere or am I more confused at the end of the yeah. day? I think we, we all leaned collectively to more confused at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, we were down there with like, I mean, we were like the Olive Gardens and like the. <laughs> Had to weave it in. There you go. Inside joke. Sorry, everybody. It's already just coming sooner, to be honest. <laughs> no, it was. Yeah. So it was it was it was disappointing for sure. And, but here and then here's how they make you feel even here's how they try to make you feel good about it. So then. Right on the back of the email comes your sales rep from Forrester. Hey, your metadata looks like you did a great job. You know, you guys are a contender in the way they try and make you feel good about it. You know, right. out of the thousands of companies that we, because they want you to go buy their services now. And so like, <laughs> it's like, oh man, no. Um, so we got a little pitch slap at, after the end of that, but it felt bad because it was like, this is not good. Like, don't try and tell me this is good. You know, right. um, sure, it will get in front of some enterprise companies maybe, but they'll never consider us, you know, because we're so down there. And they're like, oh, LinkedIn or metadata? <laughs> you know? huh. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, buy one and you get both. Actually, that's the answer. Just buy metadata, you get both. Um, so, yeah, so that was a little disappointing. Um, so then what did we do? Then we were like, how do we turn this around and make lemonade out of lemons? And it really felt like we had to say something about it because it just was a miss on the fact that it was doubling down on display. We do more than that, and we have more to offer, you know, <laughs> B2B marketers. So um, I think that's where we came up with uh, just writing a blog that kind of set our point of view on it. Yeah. Yeah. And in there, yeah, we I loved how you wrote it. It was kind of like just talking to Forrester, basically, like, hey, this is where you got it wrong. This is where you got it right, you know, and we try and be fair, you know. Um, and we didn't share it broadly, but. Uh, a couple of people shared it and, you know, some people liked it. Some people didn't. Some people thought I was, uh, what'd they say? Uh, what was wine. they, what they, no, they, they called me remember. some kind of whine. Yeah. It was like some, basically like whining, you know, it was like, I can't remember. It was like a bad term for whining, but, um, uh, yeah, now I'm going to, no, we have to stop this podcast now and figure out what he said. I'm just <laughs> 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 what was that word? No. Um, but we, the plan wasn't to like broadly push it out there. And we actually, and we share a lot of our, and it's good content, you know, and we share a lot of our good content, but this one, I was like, I just want to have it there in case somebody comes in and was like, wait, what happened with this wave? You know, we just like, oh, you know what? Yeah, this happened, you know, just <laughs> send them to the blog post. Um, and so that's why we have it out there. But, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you just want to really kind of jump into that and see how we responded. Uh, uh, take a look at that. Um, you can probably just come to our resource site and search for Forrester and probably yeah. find it. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was like the, that was really the process. I mean, so let's talk a little bit about, so if you're not doing, so if you're not going to do it, you're not going to get into these reports and you're not really going to do like dedicated analyst relations, what do you do instead? And so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing instead. Um, uh, what are we doing instead? You no know, community, building a group of people that 
want to hear more from metadata or just want to connect with other B2B marketers. I think we also realized the opportunity with G2 and um, that a lot of B2B marketers are going there for their social proof and to understand platforms better um, and just getting out there with employee advocacy and, and awareness. So I think we do a lot of boots on the ground kind of tactics that amplify the metadata voice and the metadata platform. Um, but in terms of analyst relations, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, think, so I do more videos. <laughs> they don't get watched. <laughs> a video every single day. Someone will. Until play. somebody watches it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're trying to, yeah, I think, I think our path is probably going to be, because I can't imagine, I can't envision a time in the next several years where I would pay for a subscription to any of them. Um, and so, yeah, so our strategy is really to build that groundswell, you know, really get um, solid B2B marketing practitioners um, to engage with us, you know, and to, and, and what we're trying to do is deliver them helpful content, just give them reasons to continue, con, yeah, continue to engage with us. Um, and through that, and then as we get more customers and if they're, if they're vocal, you know, then at some point the analysts, if they want to, if they want to stay true, they'll come, you know, they, they will come and they'll want to, um, mm -hmm. they'll want to brief or they'll want to learn what's going on and see what's going on. So, um, so yeah, I think we'll just, we'll kind of let it probably let it organically play out, you know, just keep doing what we're doing on the content side, engagement, do really good content, um, keep marketers happy, you know, with that stuff. Um, like almost everything else we do, the commercial stuff and the, the commercial benefit follows from it. You know, if we do it right, if we do community right, commercial benefit follows. If we do our demand event right, the, you know what I'm saying, demand event right, <laughs> the commercial stuff happens. And so I think we're going to probably take a similar approach on this one now. Yeah. And we're doing all the right steps on the product side too, listening to customer feedback, building out brand awareness side, improving reporting, making it easier for people to use the platform. And that gets back out and, you know, marketers talk. So both sides of the house are kind of on the same path. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think, uh, I think that's it. Anything else to add, Alex? It was great having a uh, great, great combo. I had fun. Yeah, well, this was lovely. First time caller, long time listener. <laughs> nice, <be> yeah. <laughs> I have to have you on again for sure. You and Mark need to get on too. That'll be fun. That'll be a fun one. <laughs> Uh, cool. Well, everybody, thanks for listening again. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the podcast. Give us a rating, but only if you're going to give us a five. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> like, um, but no, the podcast is doing really well. So thanks, everybody, for for listening. And I hope this is uh, continuing to be valuable for everybody, even though I can't talk. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.